Hello YouTube, this is Callum from English Shooting again and this is the second part of my scope base bedding process. So in the previous video you saw me apply it, screw it down and then leave it to set. Um, I have taken it off since, um, I took it off about six hours um, after first applying it, basically to make sure that it doesn't stick to the action or it hadn't stuck to the action. Um, it really didn't take any force at all, I was able to just sort of twist it off with my fingers, there was a nice little sort of pop and it came straight off. Um, I then put it back on and then left it for a good 24 hours, so it has completely set. So now we're going to get on and take it off uh, and finish the process and basically get it ready to be put on the rifle as a permanent full-time fixture. So obviously I'm just going to start uh, as always by taking it off. So I haven't cleaned it up, I haven't done anything to it apart from just take it off and you can see on it there's a little bit of, of polish there. And you can actually see some of the marks from the polish um, that was obviously raised where I put quite a lot on. Um, obviously if you put a thinner layer you would get that a lot smoother but that is fairly smooth to the touch and you can see there um, where obviously the, epo the epoxy, the JB Weld has gone into the, to the holes there slightly and made those sort of raised bits but the Play-Doh has done its job. Um, so basically the next thing now is to remove these two bits. Now I was a little bit concerned, I didn't have time to do it last night, but what I wanted to do is uh, drill these out while it was not fully set. So sort of after the five hour mark where it was sort of hard to the touch but it was still um, you know, not fully set, that's when I really wanted to do it, I just didn't have time. Um, but now hopefully if I use just a sort of standard metal drill bit, I should be able to drill through um, and remove that sort of excess so you can obviously get the uh, the screws in. Um, obviously I've still got all the Play-Doh Play there, so I'll just try and hook all that out. Obviously that comes out really, really easily. I may have to go and put this under a, a pillar drill and just wind it straight through. Oh no, it is coming through. That's really good to see. You can just see I'm poking through right there. Obviously I don't want to just absolutely rip it apart because I don't want to rip off any more than I have to. I just want to clear that hole. Yeah, absolutely no problem at all. That's really relieving. I thought I was probably going to have to use a power drill or something or a, or a pillar drill. Obviously I'm getting it all over my gun, but that can be cleared off. What I want to do next as well, this isn't really necessary, it's just to make it neater, is to get a bigger bit and just countersink those holes. Yeah, it's scraping away by hand. You, you really, well, depending on what you use, you're not going to really need a huge drill, a uh, big powerful drill. It's just being done by hand, no problem at all. You can just see there that I'm doing a slight countersunk. This is just to make sure that there's no excess around there. It is all going to be level um, and nothing's going to protrude and it makes it nice and flush. So yeah, that was relievingly easy um, and has come out pretty well, I think. Um, I'm just going to give this a bit of a clean up, use some cotton bud Q-tips, um, a bit of yeah, tissue paper and just give this a clean up as well and remove also um, what's left on the... Uh, the shoe polish that is left on the action here and just give it a good clean up and also remove the um, play-doh that's actually in the action. So there you have it. Um, you can see a very very faint outline on there but pretty much everything has been removed and seeing how serious this stuff can be and how well it, it welds to it, I mean it isn't coming off this unless you were going to chip it off. Um, so to actually be able to bond it like we have and not have anything left over, you can barely see any sort of shoe polish or, and of course the Play-Doh, that's absolutely fantastic and sort of is 
really shows why you use all the different bits, you know, shoe polish and the Play-Doh. You know, you, you could then sell that gun um, and there's nothing left over, no uh, marks or, or anything. Um, so we're ready, basically, to, to put this on. Um, now, I've seen online that people do paint this. Obviously, if you go and get some Hammerite black paint and paint that, I don't have any on me at the moment. I may, at a later date, take it off if I'm bored and paint it. But actually looking at it from the side, you really do have to look close or know what you're looking for really to see that anything's been done. I'm completely happy with it at the moment. Um, I might wait until it gets a bit more worn out and then you know paint the whole thing, but I'm happy just to put that on now so that I can complete the video. Um, the only thing that I do need and I think is really advisable um, is some Loctite. Uh, I know there's loads of different um, varieties. This was just down in my local Halfords. I think it was about five pound for the stick. Um, and it's a medium strength. You can use you know, whatever blend or flavour you, you want or like. Um, I've just got a little bit more here to clean up, but then I'm going to apply the Loctite to the screws and get it screwed down. Okay, so that's all cleaned up now. Got all the Play-Doh off. I'm completely happy with that. Um, and now it's just a case of loctite the screws and getting them sent, um, set down and screwed in. And just cover the the whole screw with this stuff. Um, it's also good for anti-corrosion. Um, it does say in it that it's got anti-corrosive properties and it will stop rust, which obviously with guns, it's uh, that's a real big concern of, of people. So it's, uh, it's good to hear that as well, that's gonna be actually helping it as well as just keeping those screws in place. So I'm just doing it sort of one by one and putting them in place so I don't lose them or get any Loctite on anything else that I don't want it to. Um, I think it said it has a, a setting time of five minutes, um, but a complete setting time of 30. So it will be, yeah, as it says, set in, 30, uh, in five, but you need to give it a full sort of 30 before you put any sort of strenuous pressure or, or strain on it. Just make sure we get that Loctite all in, in the grooves there and drop it in. Now this is a, another thing where um, if I could, I would, but I haven't got the tool, and that's using a torque wrench. Um, many places online say that these have to be done up to a certain um, tension. Again, I don't have a torque wrench. It might be something that I pick up in the future, um, and then obviously I will torque these up properly. But what I'm gonna do is to sort of hand tight. These aren't the sort of things you want to um, be putting a lot of pressure on because although the, the threads are pretty strong, the actions are pretty strong, especially on the Remington, any thread can be de-threaded by hand if you go you know full whack on it. So you just want to sort of take it nice and easy. Um, obviously they need to be done up tight, it needs to be secured, but if you're doing it by hand just don't over over tighten it. Um, the, the torque wrench isn't about you know, getting the maximum force on there and making sure it's done up effectively to a certain amount. It's more to actually protect the screws and, and the threads within the action. Um, obviously it is to then make sure it's done at least to a certain standard, but it's there to make sure you don't over tighten them. And that is actually the complete job. As you've seen, the two videos I think are gonna come to around sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, a few sped up bits and obviously that huge chunk where I leave it to set, but it is really, really easy. There are a few things um, about this job that I was a little hesitant about. The big one is getting that JP Weld all over the action and not being able to get it off. The second one was then being able to um, screw and drill through those holes um, and get the holes cleared. Um, but have you, as you've seen, this is my first time doing this. I've had no issues, um, no problems, uh, might be more luck than judgment, but I think it's just because it's a fairly easy thing to do. Um, as you can see, you can't really tell, there's a slight sort of light line across it, but it looks um, stable. Actually, while the Loctite's still a little wet, I know this is probably you know, very obvious, but if I loosen up these screws, you're gonna see now that there is no movement in that at all. You can pick it up, but you cannot push it down. Um, those two are done really tight. I'll get these done 
done up quickly before that Loctite sets. Um, but as you can see, there's now no movement in it at all, which is exactly what we wanted to do. That's the reason for doing this job, um, and it's worked. So a real big thank you for watching the videos. I really do hope that they've been useful um, and interesting for you guys. Um, and again, as always, I hope to see you soon.